The following interview was conducted with Professor William J. Fishank, Professor Emeritus of Etymology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, June 10th, 2009 in Purdue Center. It's by phone. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome again and good afternoon. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. Okay. <coughs> well, I'm... I was born in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, 1932. Uh, I only lived there for four to age four, and then we moved to adjacent town in Cheshire, Connecticut, where I grew up. Uh, my mother and father were uh, Alfred Fishang and Esther Fishang. I had one sibling, a brother, who was uh, five years older than I. What more would you like? Uh, what was your early years of school, and then uh, a little bit about high school, some things in teachers and athletics, et cetera, in high school? Okay, school was uh, elementary school was in Cheshire, Connecticut, and uh, high school was in Waterbury, Connecticut, at Crosby High School. It was uh, Waterbury is a was at least a uh, really a blue collar. Uh, town of about a hundred thousand people so they had four high schools in the in the, in the city and uh, <clears throat> let's see I was active uh, primarily in athletics I was uh, active on the football team and, and in the track team okay uh, uh, not many student organizations but uh, uh, very active there <clears throat> I uh, Manage for some strange reason, which I don't understand, uh, to be elected uh, president of a graduating class. So that Good. was, that I guess would would be an honor. I would think so. That's very nice. Uh, how large was your class? Oh, 323 students. It's okay. funny that I remember that. Maybe because I was president, I had. <laughs> <laughs> you got that number marked down in your memory, right? Yes. <laughs> how did the how did your teams do? Did you go to any uh, uh, playoffs or anything of that sort? The uh, football, a, a football or basketball, was you? Uh -huh. Football, football and track. Track, okay. Well, we had lots of competition. I mean, I, I, uh, I, you know, we didn't we didn't have much in the way of playoffs in football. It was just you know, it was I think we had nine games and we played all the local teams. Sure, okay. We did well. Good. I was uh, also the uh, oh, I was the kicker, both both extra points and punting as well as a, a receiver in the team. So hey. that was a fun thing. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Tra oh, track, and track was the same kind of thing, although we did have regional uh, competition there. Uh huh. And your team did okay? It was good, yeah, good, good competition helps a lot, you know? Yeah, sure. It molds you as you're growing up. <laughs> uh, what came next? What about how did you, uh, where'd you go to college? And tell us how you selected and tell us about college life. Okay. Um, well, I went to a, a Central Connecticut State University, which at that time was a teacher's college. Uh -huh. And uh, I went there for several reasons. One, it was uh, the closest college, and I had to be commuting from home. Okay. Uh, so we didn't, couldn't afford to, to live there. It also uh, <clears throat> was a choice because uh, in... Uh, in high school, I guess the the, uh, the, the counselor uh, did some uh, you know testing of, of aptitude, and she suggested I would be good at teaching, and I agreed with her. <coughs> and uh, also, <coughs> I was very interested in biology, so uh, the school had a very good uh, biology department, and uh, so that's where I went. Okay. Uh, was it far from where you lived? Uh, the it was about 25 miles, but you know there were no direct routes. You had to go through lots of little towns and uh, back and forth. Yeah, so yeah. I was, you know, at that time I was, uh, I had to get a ride with somebody else who was commuting. And sure. Lots of times because I had late late uh, labs, I uh, ended up hitchhiking home, <laughs> which took a long time through all these various routes to get home. I imagine, that's right. What about in the student activity? Did you continue on in athletics while you were in college? I, I did in, in track and uh, cross country. Oh, good. Uh, in as much as I lived 25 miles away, uh, there was very little on-campus activity for me. Sure. I understand. What, yeah, what I what I ended up spending a lot of 
additional time doing is tutoring students who had trouble getting through biology, which was my major. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that was just volunteer stuff, you know, for friends or people who just, just couldn't handle the courses and wanted some help. Sure. Well, that that's fun. That's very good. About how large uh, how large was the high school and how large was your class, or the college, your class, approximately? Well, it was a small school. I would mm -hmm. guess, I would guess the, 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 the graduating class was probably about the size of my high school class. Oh, okay. All righty. And uh, were there uh, many buildings on the campus? What was campus life well, like? Well, it, it, it was a legitimate campus. It was not for buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't, you know, there was a nice gym, and there was an administrative building, and there was a science building, and several others. Sure. Okay. Was there any particular professors that, uh, particularly your area major in biology, did you get to work yes. closely with some of them? Oh, well, I would say uh, yes. Uh, 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 B.J. Caston was a, a, a national, I mean, an international expert on spiders, mm -hmm. and he was sort of my mentor and taught most of the many of the biology courses and. Uh, so did have an influence on my my future direction. Good, that sounds good. Okay, after um, after college, what came next then? Did you go on to grad school? Uh, I went into the Navy. Okay, next. okay. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and where did... Okay, I, uh, at, you know, at that stage of life, for my, at my age, almost all males figured they were going into the service. They were going to be drafted or, or volunteer, so... I went to uh, officer candidate school in the Navy. Okay. And uh, I was a, an air intelligence officer, uh, which is, if you remember some old movies, uh, the guy that used to brief the pilots on where they were going and what they should do on a mission. Understand? Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I, that's what I was doing. Okay, sounds good. You're a key key member of the team. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was also a good experience because I was really teaching, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's what I ended up doing at Purdue. So. That's right, exactly. So it was a good precursor then. It was. Indeed. Yeah. Did you serve just in the United States? I'm sorry. Were you just in the United States? Oh no. Oh. Uh, you know, I w several places in the United States. Okay. But. but uh, I was also at sea on, a, on an aircraft carrier. Okay. By, by that time, I was the uh, the air group intelligence officer. Yeah. So, so all of the you know all of the pilots on the ship were uh, in the air group. Oh, okay. Sounds sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was in, that was in the Pacific. Okay. All righty. Then say so you were in for three years, and then uh, yeah, what little, came? Yeah, it was a little over three, actually, but three and a half. But yeah, okay. then I went to graduate school. Oh, and where did you uh, go to grad school? Tell uh, us yeah. about that. Okay, I went to excuse me, went to graduate school at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, <coughs> and uh, majored in entomology. Okay. Uh, I did not get a master's degree. I went straight on to get a PhD, and uh, that. That was concluded in 1963. Okay. Uh, I don't know what more you want to know about graduate what, school. Oh, that that sounds. Good. Were you married at that time? Did you met your wife? Well, okay. we got. I got married <coughs> uh, just after I completed uh, officer candidate school. Okay. So the Navy was a honeymoon. Very okay. <laughs> you can quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I'm sure she agrees. Did oh, you yes. meet? Yeah. <laughs> Um, after you got your finished your graduate work, uh, what about the career path before you came to Purdue? Did, did you come? Well, I came directly. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay. Yes, how I did came. you did uh, How did you hear, learn about uh, the opening? Did someone con was there a career fair or something like that? Well, uh, how do I how do I describe this? Uh, uh, let me say that I, at UMass, uh -huh. I, re I was really taken by the needs of the uh, of the land grant school for teachers. Okay. You know, I had some good teachers, but I also had a number of teachers that I felt, felt really did not have, you know, all the ability that I expected them to have. And so I really made a commitment to go to a land grant school and teach. Okay. And uh, <coughs> it so happens that uh, head of the department at at Purdue, uh, John Osmond. Okay. Uh, had graduated from UMass, and he was in contact with the head of the department there. And uh, I was suggested to him as a candidate for a job that they had. And so, you know, it was really he approached me yeah. at the time. And 
It was a temporary job. It was a six months replacement for one of the faculty members. Who was going on sabbatical or something like that? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was your first visit to the, to uh, Lafayette, I gather. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't quite sure where Indiana was. <laughs> which side of the Mississippi? Which side of the Mississippi was? <laughs> oh, where did you live when you first came here? Oh, that was exciting. Uh, David Ross Road. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, David Ross Road. I don't know it, how, how how long you've been around, but David for over Ross for Road. over forty years. Okay. Yeah. Well, David Ross Road at that time uh, had uh, some houses that were built as uh, prefab houses during World War during the World War. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, they had outlived their existence. And uh, they were, you know, like one family houses, and they were being used for faculty, new faculty coming in. <clears throat> and this was their last year. So you can imagine they were not in very good condition. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and in fact, they were being sold, and anybody could buy them for not very much money. And so, you know, while the year, we spent one year there. <laughs> and it was an exciting event to come up to the house in the first place. And, you know, screens were torn on the doors. And <laughs> I opened the door, and immediately smelled uh, mm. German cockroaches. Hey. You know, being an entomologist, you know, I recognize You knew right away. Said, oh, exciting. Here we are with an entomology <laughs> problem. Really. Welcome, welcome to my home, right? <laughs> yeah. But it turned out to be really a wonderful year because there were lots of other people living there sure. who, who were also new. Right. But it was kind of uh, disconcerting to watch one house after another be taken away. <laughs> during, during that year, is that what was yeah, happening? Oh, okay. Yes, and at the time that we left, I mean, you know, <laughs> they were disconnecting everything. It was really, a, <laughs> it was really kind of a, uh, you know, an uncomfortable the, position at the end. Yeah, the last roundup, in other words. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you said it was originally was a temporary. Then it turned out, I gather, it turned out then to be a permanent one. Yes. Okay. Yes, it did. Oh. Uh, okay. And I, uh, you know, I, I didn't even really apply for the job. The, the department asked me to stay, so I was delighted. Super. Well, tell us a little about the early days. Your teaching and your research focus and curriculum and all about the department. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Well, I, you know, I was I taught several different courses in, in entomology, and I was primarily a teacher. Uh huh. Well, uh, good. That's, that's what I wanted to do. I recognized that at a big research institution. Uh, teachers tend to become second-class citizens in the faculty, and I think it, it, uh, that's okay. I decided I, that's what I wanted to do, and I had made that commitment. Uh, and you liked working with the students. I liked working well, right. sure. Sure, Absolutely. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I had a, an amazing department head, John Osmond, who was very supportive, uh, did all kinds of things to support me and encourage me, and I really... Uh, I don't think there could have been a better person to do that. Right. What was the, your research focus was in the area of bees, am I correct in that? Well, uh, no, okay. actually, actually, during most of that time, uh, I, I was uh, involved in, in the insect light response. Okay. And uh, I was interested in, in honeybees, and uh, ultimately, after I came back to the department from uh, administration, I was uh, teaching beekeeping. Mm-hmm. But there were several different entomology courses I taught, and I, I really liked focusing on, on uh, beginning students, although I also uh, taught uh, courses for incoming graduate students mm-hmm. uh, as well. But right. there, were, there were just, you know, I, you don't need, I don't think, to go through all of the courses that I taught. Sure, but. no. That, and then I think one thing that I did read, biology teaching, or something I read that you men- it mentioned maybe in some article or something, that insects do help in biology teaching. Is that uh, sort of a little bit, uh, uh, the insect of the, the classification helps a little bit? Well, you know, there are more insects than any other animal, so. Yeah, right. And they're everywhere. And That's they're, right. And they're, and they're easy to handle, and you can get any number that you need. And so, you know. It's it, a good tool. It's a wonderful device. and. Uh, I know the department, I, I wasn't much involved, but the department has sure. really worked hard to bring insects into elementary classrooms and, and help uh, teachers use them as a device. Right. Know, as a, as a, and, right. So, yes, yes. Yeah. And, I was, and I was primarily then interested in students. 
Sure, exactly. Involved in lots of things regarding them. Right. When I think of insect, I have two cats, and they if they see a little, if I see them at a point, then I know there must be some little ant or something on the floor that they've seen that I haven't seen, and usually they're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, then um, let's talk a little bit about uh, diver diversity in the department and the bug bowl. Those were two things that were uh, going on at the time you were in the department as well. What, yeah, tell me what you mean. In by diversity. diversity, you mean about the uh, um, uh, were gender, there are more females coming in, and across the board, the uh, okay. uh, widespread spectrum of different people, mm -hmm. different backgrounds. Well, you know, well, the department already had a, a, a female uh -huh. faculty member, and, uh, you know, during all of the years I've been there, it, the numbers increased. Sure. Um, and as far as diversity, there were lots of, uh, of uh, people of various for, for foreign origin. Uh, in the department, I don't remember sure. blacks particularly, but sure, uh, there was a spread, which is yeah. right, which oh, is yeah. good, right? Yeah. But you know, it, it, when I came to the university in 1963, you know, it was a different world then. I imagine. And uh, <clears throat> it's like all things; they changes. Oh yeah, constantly. But, yeah, but it, you know, it, it was uh, a couple of generations ago uh, atmosphere. That's as you right. can well imagine. You're right, exactly. You I don't know what you'd like to know about Bug Bowl. Well, did, Bug well, did that start uh, while you were there or yes, not? Yes, okay. sure, and I was involved in it. Okay, okay, and it still it still goes on, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Tom, Tom Turpin is the one that really right. started that. But, uh -huh. but uh, shortly, everybody in the department got involved. Sure, exactly. <clears throat> um, and, and that weekend occupied everybody. That's right. Yes, and it was pretty crowded again this year, and, and <laughs> fortunately they had good weather. Some years the weather gets a little on the cold side, but this year it, it held out, so it was okay. Yeah, my, my role largely was involving uh, honeybees. Oh, okay. All righty. Let's talk a little bit about the student services. Uh, you were the vice president. Uh, tell us for the researchers how that came about and some of the things that uh, you, you're involved in, your responsibilities in that uh, position. Okay. This, this should probably be a long time. <laughs> a long <laughs> session. Okay. Um, I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Well, uh, let me say that I didn't seek the position. I was happy in the classroom, and I got a call one day uh, telling me that uh, the new <coughs> uh, provost, that was uh, Cotton Robinson, I don't know if you remember him. Yes, he was here. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, he, he was here, and uh, I, what I got a call from, from the dean of engineering, who was, I don't know, sort of standing in at the time, saying, could I come and meet uh, Dr. Robinson, and he wanted to talk to me. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a teacher in the classroom. I was, and, and it was, you know, right away he was asking me to come over. Boy, I was glad I had a tie. And I didn't know if I had a jacket, but anyway, I went over, and, and, and he offered me the job of vice president for student services. I said, "Holy smokes!" And I said, "I really don't want it. I'm happy where I am in the classroom." And uh, you know, so you know, we had a little more discussion. He talked about, certainly, you can go back to the classroom at any time you want. Well, all right, maybe. So that was what happened and how I got involved. In it. Oh, okay. I mean, it was, and Don Mallet was the vice president at the time, and he was quite ill. Okay. So, so that, too, was kind of a temporary appointment, okay. Okay. Uh, which continued for 16 years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, I, again, I, want, I wanted to point out that the time had a big impact on that job <coughs> in 1971. Do you remember the university in 1971? Yes, I do. Well, you know, we uh, the student activism, which had started in, in you know, in, in California mm -hmm. uh, in the early 60s, was spreading across the country, and it had only recently arrived at Purdue, and we had a lot of, of, of really nasty stuff happening. I know. Police had been attacked. There were students walking over cars. There were a lot of sit-ins, and that was 1971 mm -hmm. and when I came into the job of vice president for student services. So that was a setting which had a tremendous impact on, on the nature of the job. I would say so. And you know, before that, I think that universities did not expect students to be participants in the business of running a university, uh, or, and, 
you know it was just a very different atmosphere and students really uh, stood up in the country and were creating a cultural change in the in the society mm -hmm. and so that was a really very dramatic kind of a of an introduction that I had to student services uh, I know even <coughs> Uh, shortly after I was on the job, there, there was a sit-in over in the union, and so oh, uh, my wife Peg and I went over, and we were just wandering around talking to students, and you know, you, you, I think you know the the atmosphere was these were hostile people who were trying to wreck the university, and uh, gosh, we found that they were perfectly pleasant with the, the important important messages to deliver. You know, they just wanted to participate and be yeah. more involved. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of a lot of what I was about in, in, during the first year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I, I found a number of students that were considered activists who were perfectly uh, reasonable human beings, and a couple of them I supported in what they were doing. And I didn't, didn't, you know, in some of those cases, I expect I didn't make friends in the rest of the administration, but I felt it was necessary. Sure. And. Uh, even had the experience of uh, a potential, <coughs> a big gathering of students in, in town uh, that looked like it was going to get out of hand. And one of the students that I had uh, helped, who, who would have been categorized as, 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 a, as, a, as negative from the administration, called me to ask if he could get a, uh, oh, what are those things called, that they magnify your voice. I can't remember what they call it, but you know, like a, bull, bull, a bullhorn, a megaphone, or something like I think that. It was a bullhorn. Okay. You know, which and and I said sure. So he he ended up causing the whole thing to calm down. I said, my, what an investment it was in yeah. helping that student. That's right. Because he managed to call off what could have been a very nasty situation. Yeah. So that was kind of you know, that's a lot of what the first year was about. Oh, what a big, huge challenge. No kidding. Right. No kidding. The uh, let me ask you this, Dr. Vishen, Dean, uh, as vice president for student services, do you have what departments? Re I'm thinking of the research. What departments reported to you, or what was your other? What was the sphere of responsibility? Okay. okay. Let me give you a list. Okay. Uh, this is the list that I ended up with. There were some changes along the way, but. Okay. Okay, you ready? Go, 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 okay. go ahead. The Office of Admissions, the University Placement Service the Office of the Dean of Students, and the Division of Financial Aid, the Office of International Student Services, the Psychological Services Center, the Office of the Registrar, the Department of Convocations and Lectures, the Department of University Bands, Purdue Musical Organization, mm. Department of Military Science, Department of Naval Science, Department of Aerospace Studies, the Division of Recreational Sports, and the Student Hospital. <laughs> wow. There were, uh, <laughs> that's what, that's what a lot That's of more than the top list. 10. You had more than 10 on that list. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. I think there were 15. <laughs> I, think, I think I started with uh, um, more like 18 or 19. <laughs> wow. Did you know that going in there were that many departments? No, no, when I went in, there were, there were more. Oh, oh, there were more, oh. Yeah, there was, I think there were two or three more. Oh, okay. <laughs> we winnowed a few down, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, you know, I had no administrative experience, by the way, nor did I have any administrative aspirations. But there I was on the job. There I was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you, uh, how did it happen that you uh, stayed so long? Was there did you did you try to maybe go back to the department or or Why just did to, I stay so long? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, you got into it. Well, I got into it, and right. I was making progress. And you know what I found was most significant about the job, and the most I could do was to to establish an attitude in the people and student services. And that was an attitude that, that uh, focused on the mission of student services, which I claim is uh, what I have said and what I, uh, I did when I was on the job was every major decision that I made, I asked myself the question, how, how does this affect the education of Purdue students? Good and, question. And so it, 
we tended to consider ourselves as partners with the faculty in the, the, the education of the whole student. Right. And uh, so that was an attitude that I was able to develop in, I hope, almost all of the people in student services, which, you know, there were about 400 people in that group. That's right. That's right. <coughs> was your, your office was in Hufty Hall? Yes. So, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, now you served. Um, you served under uh, when you went in. There was Dr. Hansen, and then yeah. Well, uh, yes, and it was his beginning. You know, right. Uh, he you know, he was brand new, and quite a change from the situation we had before. I mean, Doc, uh, Dr. Huggy was a wonderful uh, president, but it was a different era. That's right. Oh yes. And uh, I'd like to say a little bit more about the 70s. If you Go know. ahead, please. Um, now the 70s were really kind of a product of all the student activism throughout the country. And there were just all kinds of dramatic changes that took place in that dec first decade that I was there. And so it was a little hard to get out. And when you ask the question about why did you stay so long? Sure, uh, okay. Would, if I were to, to have left, I should have done it after the first year. Uh, but, you know, for example, do you remember Title IX? Yes. Okay, do you understand what that's about? Yes. Well, that was 1972. Yes. Okay, it didn't, didn't get implemented until about 75, so you can imagine those three years, what, what was going on in student services. I, yes, I understand. And uh, also, in the early 70s, you may remember the draft stopped. Correct. Yes, I do. So, at that time, you know, before then, uh, we had the three to, uh, in, our, in our OTC department, the ROTC departments, Army, Navy, and Air Force. And the Army was in the armory, while the Navy and the Air Force were in buildings down on the Ag campus. And that was because there were so many students involved because of the draft. Okay. So what happened is suddenly the numbers dropped. I mean, I don't think, I think at that time we had a total number of students <coughs> after, after the draft stopped. I think we had a total number of students in the neighborhood of 700. What happened then is we had to remodel the armory to accommodate all three departments in one building, and that was a pretty dramatic move to make as well. Uh, one of the things that occurred, let's see, do you remember the Buckley Amendment? Mm -hmm. Yes, family I'm familiar with that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Correct. Gave, you, know, you remember that gave students the right to have access to their records and to even challenge them. Well, imagine what that did to student services. I mean, you think of all the records that, I mean, the, the registrar's office has, for example. That's right, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, uh, one of the others that came along in the same decade was uh, this uh, rehabilitation, was Section 504, I think it was, for the Rehabilitation Act, in which handicapped people uh, were, you, you were not allowed to, just to uh, deny any handicapped person participation in anything if they were otherwise qualified. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I do. Right. Oh, boy. That, <laughs> that was another one. Oh, yeah. yeah These are right. all happening at the same time. Sure. And financial aid was being over-regulated. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a frightening thing to have to deal with. The Veterans Administration was changing regulations, and we had people spending almost full time doing that as well. Mm. Uh, so, you know, that whole era was really very dramatically changing the whole university. Sure. And as a result, there were a lot of internal changes in uh, student services as well to, to accommodate the general uh, acceptance, I should say, reluctant acceptance of students as participants. Uh, uh, let me see, I could give you a couple of examples of those too, if you'd like. Why don't you give me one? That would be fine. Yeah, one that, okay. you, that you care to call, recall. That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, Music Hall Entertainment Committee. That ring any bells? Well, I remember V, v Squared. Okay, yeah. And that Having gone to many of their performances. Yeah, that committee uh, was largely operating uh, with uh, um, staff for faculty control. And students were really upset about the nature of the, of the music, for example. Mm. And so that's one thing that I ended up having to do is to change the whole committee so that it was made up of largely students and 
and only four non-students on the committee, and that set up the stage for oh, all of the loud music that sure. followed. Right, more down there. They're down their lane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a challenge that year, and then. Um, things changed a little bit then, of course, in the 80s was a little bit different. Yeah, right. Yes. Right. Things settled down a little bit. Sure. Uh, nonetheless, but, you know, there, there was constant change. Right. How about the President's Council? Were you involved were you involved with that, sir? I, I was not involved with the President's oh. Council. Okay, okay. No, no. You remember in the bearing years, it was at Vision 21? Yes, that, I, was, I wasn't really, I, you know, I was preoccupied with students. Sure, right. But that was the, the advancement development era, or I the thing that they yes. had during that. That's right. 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 Let's right. talk a little bit about your awards and honors. You got you got quite a few teaching awards from the College of Agriculture. Well, uh, yeah, but I'm not really all that concerned about <laughs> those. <laughs> They're nice. Okay. Yeah, the students recognize you, right. But yeah. one of the things I think is nice that that William J. Fishank Fund that yeah. the theater established. Yes. Uh, tell us a little about that. I, I think that's wonderful. Well, it was established when I was stepped down as vice president, and it was established by uh, uh, Lorna Myers, who was head of convocations. And lectures. Right. Yes, the, I read an article that she's the one that uh, put it in place. Yes. Were yes. you a little? How did they uh, announce it to you? Were you a little? Were you surprised? Of course. Oh, good. Yes. I like surprises like oh, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Yes. Oh. Any other? Uh, Awards or con com that you'd like to make any comment on that you've received over time? Oh, I don't know that I do. Okay. Uh, okay. There are, you know, there have been a number of them, but I don't really sure. think it's Sure, I understand. It's not to That's talk okay. about me, it's to talk about Purdue. <laughs> uh, what about professional associations? Did you keep active in those during all these during the years you were I, here? I did belong to the Entomological Society of America for all of those years, but uh, I've dropped out pretty much of of that right. as well. Okay, all right. Let's talk about your family. Do you, uh, did, uh, you have children? Did they come to Purdue? Both did. Okay. Yes, two stu two sons. Okay, and where where do they live um, now? now? Uh huh. Okay, one one lives in Maine. Okay. Uh, he has uh, works for uh, <clears throat> a uh, drug company, uh, pharmaceutical company, uh, in sales, and is very successful. The other one lives in California. And he is uh, president and CEO of the uh, Sonoma County uh, Tourism Bureau. And so that's a fun place to go. Oh, yes. And you've got them on both coasts. you got the east and west covered. Well, yeah. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm practically on the east coast. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was going to talk about, ask you about your retirement activities. <laughs> and you came and born and raised in, in the northeast. So is that your, your reason for returning there? or and Tell us a little about what you've been doing in retirement. Okay, well, let me tell you about why we we moved from from, from Boilermaker Country. Yes, <laughs> you know I I looked around at a lot of my friends who retired and and watched them become half spins and you know tried to hang on to what they had when they were active at Purdue. Okay, and I said you know I really would like to go someplace else and begin anew and. So the next step in my, in my life, exactly. Uh, yeah, so that's what, that's what we did, and we moved to New Hampshire. Uh, and for several reasons, uh, we had a, a, a camp here that had been in the family for a long time, and so we were f familiar with the, the area. Uh, most of our vacations while we were at Purdue were backpacking vacations, either in the northeast or in the west. And so decided to come to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I wanted to come without any baggage of my past, <laughs> so, uh, and start anew, and hope that I could get people to accept me as I am, and not who I was. Okay. And so that's been an interesting and successful retirement plan. So, people that had no idea who I was <laughs> when I came here, in terms of Purdue, Okay. And so uh, we've established, you know, a new life here, and uh, have drifted away from Purdue a lot. I mean, we hardly ever go back now. And I must tell you that the longer you're away from something like that, the more you forget. Uh, I imagine. Did you build? Did you select? A, did you build a home there? Or did well, yes, you? Oh, okay. We built. We we for, first we purchased land 
to build a home on. Okay. Uh, and then had that for, well, let's see, 21 years now. Oh, this is before you retired then? Before I retired. All right. And uh, then uh, got started with building the house actually even before I left. Mm -hmm. So the foundation was in uh, when I, you know, I retired on May 18th in 97, and in June I was here. Wow. Perfect <laughs> so, timing. Perfect. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, sure. It's, you know, there was a lot of stress with that kind of oh, yeah. schedule. And... Uh, so we, yes, we built a timber frame home. We've got a big piece of land, 118 acres. Wow. We've surrounded by forest. You walk out the door and you can hike all day if you want and never be in the same place. Oh, sounds good. I think I'll, I'll see if the, if the plane is leaving today. <laughs> uh, oh. Well, if you do that, it's a long way to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have a new airport in Indianapolis, you may have heard. The brand new one that just opened in November. Oh, really? They, uh, it's a few, a little bit beyond where the old one was. The old one is still there, and they haven't decided what they're going to do with it. And it's huge, huge, because I just came back from a trip, and we took the new uh, airport. So it's it's really big. It's too bad it's so big. It was such a lovely airport. I know. I'm, I'm almost lost, and the parking is quite a ways, the long and short-term parking, so they yeah. have a shuttle that runs you back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you but, okay, you asked about activities. Yes, uh huh. And uh, any well, specific. I'm still a beekeeper. Okay. And uh, my wife and I hike. Um, I'm also a kayaker. So Ooh. I'm on the Connecticut River quite frequently. Okay. Usually two or three times a week. And see, I'm a member of the Ch uh, Jefferson, that's where I live in Jefferson, as you know, uh -huh. Jefferson Conservation Commission. Okay. Um, I'm just finishing up six years on the. Uh, the uh, County Cooperative Extension Advisory Council. Very you know, that's, nice. That's the same extension service you have. Okay. And uh, Peg and I are both on a group that monitors the quality of the water in the river that runs through our area. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've been involved, well, I, my most recent uh, challenges, I, I just was uh, uh, elected, I guess that's a right, right, elected <laughs> to a brand new board uh, for the local farmer's market. Oh. And so that's going to They still have the one here, you know. Yes. Yes. Th yes. But this this was a farmer's market that had no board. It was controlled by the vendors only, and they de they decided to establish a board. Oh, I see. And so this is brand new, so, you know, and that's fun. Oh, Yes. I like the farmer's market. I go there on Saturday, and I yeah. miss it. It's a little early because a lot of the produce is not in yet. But, uh, well, there's some. Yes, but not, uh, you know, some of it. I right. got some. Right. One has leaf lettuce, right. and that's kind of good. What's what's the size of the town that you're living in, Jefferson? Is it very large? 1,000 people. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. oh. And, and the town next door where they have the farmer's market uh -huh. is Lancaster. Okay. That's the county seat. Oh, and that has thirty-five hundred people. Oh wow! <laughs> and it's, a, and it's a, you know from a, from a, it's the northernmost and the biggest of the counties in the state. Oh okay, okay. So you get a feeling for the area. Yes, I do very much. So. Yes, a um, couple things. Do you have a, 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 a Purdue tradition that uh, you'd like to share with us that comes to mind? Oh. And or I'll ask you about an outstanding event. I'll give you, you can take both or however you want to do it. I usually ask people that, but it's up to them if they want to respond. Well, uh, to, to which? Uh, either one. Do you want, do you have a tradition that, that, that you recall? Oh, I, I don't, I'm not, not sure really? that I would call it a tradition, okay. but you know, you, know, you know what impressed me the most about Purdue when I, my first week there? Okay, sure, tell us. Was the marching band coming down the street at late after practice? Yeah. You know, when I'd be walking home at night to, to, and you'd to see them. David Ross Road, and, and there would come the Golden Girl and all that band, right. all looking excited, nobody watching except <laughs> me, and I was so excited. I know. And, and that, that established, you know, a kind of a, an attitude. Right. I agree. I, th I feel that way, too, and I sometimes see them, and, and now uh, or we see them at the game, too, as well. <laughs> yes. What about an outstanding event? Well, other than birth and marriage, I'm not sure what you'd like to know. Right? I mean, there's a whole series of things, <laughs> well, but I don't see any, any particular The marriage is kind of nice. A lot of people. You know, interesting, Dr. Fishing, I share something with you. A couple people have said to me about uh, tradition, uh, they've mentioned commencement. 
Oh, well, yes, yeah. I would say that too. Because uh, and a lot of people not, but recently I've talked to some, and it is, and I, when I talk to students or when I help at receptions and things, I say to the parents, you'll love it. It's just great. And they've continued that in that same vein. They yeah, get I their think, own. Yeah, I think I should have probably mentioned that because. Uh, and you were involved with it too. Oh, very much. Oh, yeah, yes. I was responsible for That's it. That's right, exactly. You know, and, uh, you know, PMO and the band both. And right. The registrar. The registrar. Office. There you go. And uh, I must tell you that uh, I even was uh, approved the decision, which was a difficult one, to do away with sheepskin diplomas. They were really sheepskin. Is that right? Yes, they were. Wow. Oh. And the reason was. Uh, it, it was so difficult to get them, and they were usually coming in late at the last minute. Uh, they were irregular. I mean, I had a student once who laminated his diploma, and it just shrank to about the size of a business <laughs> card. Oh, no. You know, I mean, <laughs> and, and so, and, and they were getting costly. Uh, oh, I bet. But, but, you know, more important than that, though, was the fact that, that we always actually delivered the diplomas to the students on the stage, and they got their, their, their right diploma, and if in fact they had achieved honors, uh, it was already noted on there. And uh, that, I hope, still continues. Oh, I think it does. It's really, it's nice. It, and probably that, that's, when... That's rare, you know. Right. Probably when you were first here, I think it was in Dr. Baring's, because before that there was only maybe the spring one. No, there were. Well, were no, there more than one at the time when you were here? I, well, yes, there okay. was. There was. There was. There was one in, in, in uh, you know, at, between semesters. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. But now they have one, you know, December and then yes. May and also yes. in August. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, obviously May was the big one. Sure, and still is. And still is. I hope. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. They run. They've been running. They run about four. They usually do Friday night, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. I think once we even did five. Oh, <laughs> well, that, that could be. <laughs> uh, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I think I have been to something like 70 to 80 commencements at Purdue. Oh, I bet you have. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. And and closing, any uh, closing comments or something well, that you'd like to uh, yeah, share I with might, us? I might. Well, just one ahead. thing I'd like to talk about in terms of, of, of my re relationship, and that's sort of the University Senate. Good. Uh, as a faculty member in entomology, I spent three years on the university senate, and they were at the very, you know, not at the very beginning. I wasn't a charter member, but it was early in the senate's existence. Was very, very active. Got involved in an awful lot of things. And then, as as, as uh, vice president, I was on the senate by virtue of the job. So when I finally left the job, I had been on the senate for 19 years, and, the, and, there were only, and it was only 22 years old. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and I don't think at that time anyone had been on that long. I doubt it. And, you know, I really felt that I made a major commitment to, to, to the university senate and was influential in getting a lot of things accomplished there. And, uh, felt very good about that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's very good. Any any other things that you, uh, or any topics that I missed or that you feel you want to share with us? Oh, I don't know. I could talk all day. But oh, well, then we'll have to do part two one of these days. How about I that? Think, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, Dr. Fiction, I want to thank you very, very much for the opportunity to talk with you. And I, if we saw each other, I think we'd be recognized, because I, so. I recognize because yeah, so. I've been around. And, I do uh, have I do have one thing I want to oh, ask you. Sorry, please do. I did not actually yet send in that. Uh, That's okay, uh, because I have one other form, the deed of gift. Normally, when I interview one on one, I give it to the person, but I will send that to you in the mail so you well, can send them both back this, to me. This is the research project uh, thing? Yes, no, yeah. the other one is the deed of gift because ultimately the tape will be turned over to the archives and researchers can, uh, you'll get a copy of the transcript to review. Ultimately, it'll be on, in the archives and special collections. Okay. But It'll I be do listed on our website. I do have that form. I'm happy to send it to you. That's okay. You can send. Uh, I'll be sending a, and a thank you letter with the deed of gift from the libraries, and you can just send both back at the same time. Okay. Great. Okay. Very good. And you will send me a transcript. You said. Yes, I will send you a draft. It'll be a little bit of a time, but we'll send the draft for you to review before we put it on. Uh, before we turn it over to the archives. And do I have any opportunity for making changes? Absolutely. Right. Okay. That's the reason it's only. It'll. Be, it's, I have this lovely red stamp, and it says draft. Okay. With big letters. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Thank you very, very much, and have a good, uh, a good day, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Well, thank you. Kevin. You're welcome. Bye, bye. <clears throat>